Hey guys, it's Dorian. So today I'm going to show you how to dual boot your system again after you've installed uh, Windows 10. Um, you're going to use a utility called Gparted or whatever your favorite partitioning software is. And I just want to show you here real quick, when you resize your drive, you have to take into account that if you have an extended partition, um, you have to expand that and then move the uh, partitions inside of it. Uh, check my other video on partitions and extended partitions where I explain it in more details. But um, just so you're aware, if you're trying to make space and it's not working, it's probably for this reason. So as you can see, once you extend your um, extended partition, then you can move stuff around inside of it. So <clears throat> it's just the way it works. Um, like I said, check my other video, but this is how you're going to make yourself some uh, free space so you can install uh, Windows 10. So you see here I have almost 60 gigs. So I'm not going to put an NTFS partition here. I'm going to let Windows do that when I install it. So I'm going to reboot now and uh, boot off of the Windows 10 media. And for the installation, you're just going to uh, proceed as normal. Uh, I'm going to skip some of it. Um, you enter your product code and accept the agreement and whatever. And then you're going to come to a screen where it's going to ask you to install or uh, upgrade or custom. And you're going to pick custom. So this is going to show you your partitions. And uh, here you can pick your um, free space and create a new NTFS partition for Windows and it'll ask you if it can make a special partition for itself and yeah accept that it puts uh, it puts some utilities in there some recovery tools so then uh, now you have your new NTFS partition and you're going to select that and install that and now what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and install Windows and it's going to overwrite your bootloader. So Linux isn't going to be able to boot. So you see here now I'm going to reboot and it's just going to go straight into Windows because Grub is gone. Uh, Windows 10 overwrote the uh, boot sector with its own bootloader so you're just going to go straight into Windows. So here you can see your Linux partitions which it can't identify, and then your recovery partition for Windows 10 and the C drive for Windows 10. So this just confirms that you know your, your Linux partitions are still there, your um, root drive and your swap. It's just that um, the boot manager has been overwritten. So we're going to fix that now. All right, so because I'm using a virtual machine, I'm going to do things a little differently. If you're using a virtual machine, you can follow along what I'm doing. If you're not, you're going to go to um, Google and download whatever ISO you prefer. Uh, download Ubuntu ISO, whatever. As long as it has a live um, USB, live DVD uh, capability. So you're going to burn it to DVD or you're going to burn it to, or not burn it, copy it into a USB and uh, make it bootable. And with my virtual machine, I'm just going to add the disk. I think I have Ubuntu Budgie, which I'm going to be testing out soon. So basically you're going to boot off of your USB, your DVD, and when the option comes up, you'll have either try Ubuntu, Debian, whatever you pick, or install. You're going to pick try, because all we have to do is get into a working uh, Linux environment so that we can um, reinstall Grub. Okay, so here you're just going to click try, whichever distribution you picked. And once you get to your desktop, you're going to open uh, your terminal. Now there's a few things that we have to do before, uh, before we get to work. You can um, 
Startup G parted. So you can see what your device is that you're going to fix grub on. If you only had one hard drive in your system, then it's probably dev slash SDA, unless it's a M2 SATA or something. Um, but having a look at this, see there's only one device in this virtual machine. It confirms here's my Linux partition, my swap partition, and here's Windows 10 that I just installed. So I know it's slash dev slash SDA. So on most systems, you'll have the slash mount, which is empty. So what we could do is we're going to mount dev SDA1, which is our Linux partition, onto slash mount. Now we have to mount a few other things, sound. We're going to mount bind. How can I make this bigger? Now I'll zoom in on the video after. So we have to mount a few things to make this work. I'm going to put this in the description as well. Okay, now that you have all those system parts mounted, now we can actually do a change route. So you're going to do a sudo change route mount, which is where we mounted our Linux partition. Now we are in our Linux partition. And here we're going to do a grub install on SDA. SDA is the hard drive where Linux and Windows 10 are installed. You're not going to do SDA1 because you don't want grub installed on the partition. You want it installed on the boot sector of the drive. So you do SDA. And now that we've mounted everything, it's done. Now we can do a update grub. Now you can see here it found our Linux images and it found Windows 10 on SDA3, which is correct. So now, oh, I'm going to exit. Actually, I'm going to shut down so I can disconnect my drive, but you should be able to just take out your USB, take out your CD drive, and reboot. I'm just going to make sure that this is gone. Yes. And now, when you boot up, you're given the option of Windows 10 or back into Ubuntu. And Grub is restored. And now we're back to normal. So we've got our Linux up and running again. We can still boot into Windows 10, and everything's fixed. So this uh, issue happens when you install Windows last. Typically most people buy a Windows machine and uh, then install Linux on it, which is easier because it installs Grub second. Um, but it's also possible for you to triple boot a system, which I have had systems that triple boot. Um, and it's just a matter of updating Grub and it'll find both of your Linux distributions and your Windows 10 distribution and it'll just keep adding to the list. You could have as many operating systems as you want. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Hope you find it helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and you can find me over on Twitter at Dorian.slash. Till next time.